The film begins with a man admitting to a police officer that he had been both drunk and cursed, but he also mentions having some documents for a complaint. He makes it clear, however, that he has no intention of showing up in court. The officer, Nistor, listens and then hands the man a sheet of paper, instructing him to write down his account of the events. The man reluctantly agrees and begins to write. Nistor then went to his colleague and asked for two days off, and his colleague told him they would discuss it tomorrow. Nistor went to the church to seek more information. The man there recounts how he had thrown a man who was cursing out of the church and banned him from returning. He provides further details about the incident as Nistor listens. Later on, Nistor and a colleague are driving in a car, and Nistor mentioned he's not really in the mood to work. He asks his colleague what he imagines his future will be like when he's older. The colleague, sensing something is off, asks what's bothering Nistor. In response, Nistor shares a vague comment hinting that he doesn't expect to see the colleague around often in the future. Nistor is out shopping for clothes and decides to visit his daughter, Roxana, at the salon where she works. She greets him but points out that he should come to the back whenever he's wearing his uniform. Nistor brushes this off and changes the subject, mentioning that he has two days off, conveniently aligning with the school holiday. He casually tells her that he plans to take her son, Radu, fishing, which leaves Roxana a bit puzzled. Nistor then hands her a piece of clothing he just bought, though it doesn't seem to fit her well. He promises to return and exchange it for a smaller size before leaving the salon. Nistor heads to the station, where he's introduced to Karina David, a specialist in human trafficking. His boss informs him that two young girls, who were witnesses in the Marika gang's trial, have gone missing and orders Nistor to track them down. The boss hints that the old man, Coco, they've been looking into, might be involved. Karina, with a smirk, reassures Nistor that this investigation will be more than worth his time and effort, suggesting he'll find it quite entertaining. N Nistor then gathers his team and briefs them on the case, showing them the report about the two missing girls. They quickly head over to the old man's house, but when they arrive, the old man's son refuses to let them in. Unfazed, Nistor warns him that they'll return with a warrant, and the son, not wanting any further trouble, reluctantly agrees. Later, Nistor and his partner, Chirvasyu, sit at a cafe, watching a young man named Raj working hard just outside. The cafe owner calls Raj over and asks him to show his ID to Nistor. Curious, Nistor questions why Raj is dressed in a shirt, to which the cafe owner casually replies that it's Raj's personal choice before handing him a jacket. Nistor then leaves his team at the cafe and steps into another room with the owner. Inside, Nistor shows the cafe owner a picture of the two missing girls, Angela and Carmen. The owner, however, doesn't provide any useful information, acting as though she's clueless about the situation, leaving Nistor frustrated by the lack of leads. Meanwhile, Nistor stops by another nearby cafe, and his conversation with the owner there is far more relaxed and familiar, indicating they've known each other for quite some time. They chat casually for a while, hinting at a deeper connection between them. He then showed her the pictures of the girls and asked if she knew them, and she told him that the blonde was there yesterday. She proceeded to provide details about the girl, and Nistor told her to come to him with more information before leaving. Nistor and Chirvasyu reached a trailer where two girls were sitting. They approached and told the girls they couldn't stay there and that they were taking them to the station. The two girls were arrested and taken to the station. Nistor and Chirvasyu took their IDs and scanned them. Nistor then sat with one of the girls to ask questions. He asked where she was from and why she was there. She told him that she was waiting for someone. She then attempted to flirt with him, but Chirvasyu walked in. The girl then said she was hungry and wanted to leave. Nistor and the girl, Heidi, went to a diner to eat. After they sat down, Nistor told her she needed to talk to Karina and called her. Heidi took the phone, but quickly handed it back. Nistor then told Karina that Heidi didn't want to talk at the moment. Their food arrived, and Nistor asked for Heidi's phone number, but she refused to give it to him. Nistor gave her his phone number so she could call him if she changed her mind. He then called someone to inform them where he and Heidi were. Heidi asked if he was trying to scare her, and he pressed her to tell him about Valentina. She said she didn't want anything to do with them, but he told her to reassure them she was with them. She then asked to be taken home. When they reached her home, she pointed out which house was hers and told him she lived with her boyfriend. She asked about his family and learned he had a daughter and a grandson. As she was about to get out, he asked how she got involved with Marika. She said it was just a past mistake and left the car. Nistor got out of the car and walked into the building she had entered. He decided to leave and return to his car. He then moved the car to the corner and began watching the building from a distance. He saw Heidi and her boyfriend leaving and he drove toward them. 
Heidi's boyfriend told him to move, and Nistor told him to walk first. Heidi's boyfriend hit Nistor's car, and Nistor got out. As they started arguing, others gathered, and Nistor told them he was a cop. One of the guys tried to flirt with Heidi, but she pushed him away and got into Nistor's car. As they were driving, Nistor asked if the guy was her boyfriend, but Heidi just said he was an idiot. He then asked if she would talk to the inspector now and called her. Back at the station, Nistor was called by his boss. His boss told him that Heidi identified two men with a felony who hung around the nightclub and were probably sent by Marika. Later that night, Nistor and Heidi went out for coffee. While Nistor was driving, Heidi touched his face intimately. He then dropped her off and left. At home, Nistor received a call from Heidi, asking him to come pick her up. He told her to stay put and called someone to notify them that the girl they sent to the unit was out and asking for a pickup. The next morning, Nistor attended a meeting about a gas leak complaint. After the meeting, Udria pulled him aside, angry about Heidi not doing what they wanted. Nistor went to the diner with another officer and asked for Raj. He was told Raj wasn't there, so they ordered coffee and sat down to drink. Nistor then visited the Reverend and asked if he had blessed Coco's house. When the Reverend asked why, Nistor told him he was looking for a girl. The Reverend said his uniform would not allow him to do that. Nistor begged, but the Reverend refused. He then went to a furniture store and asked the owner, Tudos, if he had finished work for Coco. He showed him a picture and asked if he had seen the girls. Tudos said he had seen the brunette and mentioned that Coco was sick. Nistor asked if Coco had given him the cigarettes on the table, and Tudos confirmed, adding that there were more in the attic. Nistor finally returned to the station. Later, while shopping, Nistor got a call and went to see a young boy who was sleeping. He asked where Heidi was, and the boy told him she was at Dorina's. Nistor went to Dorina's house, and she warned him that Heidi was in shock and wouldn't stop talking. Nistor tried to speak to her, but Heidi refused. He then asked if they could take a ride, and as she was about to refuse, Dorina told her she couldn't stay, so she left with him. Nistor asked if it was okay to go to his place, and Heidi agreed, so he drove her to his house. Once inside, she commented that she hadn't expected this type of house. While sitting, he asked if there was anything she needed to tell him. She said there was nothing and asked if she could take a shower. While she showered, Nistor set a bed on the couch. He brought her clean clothes and then went to the kitchen to make dinner. He asked if she wanted a sandwich and she said yes. She then approached him and tried to take off his shirt. When he pushed her away, she removed her own shirt and pulled him in for a kiss. They fell onto the couch and became intimate. Afterward, they went to bed and slept there. The next morning, Nistor got up while Heidi was still sleeping. He pulled the blanket off her to get her up. As they were eating breakfast, Heidi asked him to get her ID so she could go to Spain. She told him he could come with her for the weekend, and he said he would think about it. He then told her not to go anywhere and left for work. A man came to report his wife. Nistor told him he was boring and instructed him to write his statement and leave. He then went to Udria and requested a day off for the following day. Udria approved the day off. After work, Nistor returned home and noticed Heidi wasn't there. He tried calling her, but her phone was still there. He began searching the house for any clues, but found nothing. He went back to Dorina and asked where Heidi was, but she said she didn't know and didn't want anything to do with her, then closed the door on him. That night, Nistor went drinking, but then headed to the trailer, where he had first found Heidi and saw her with a man. He left without saying a word. The next morning, Chirvasiu called Nistor and showed him Heidi's body. Nistor suspected Coco might be involved and decided to confront him. Chirvasiu sat down with Coco and his son. He asked about Heidi, and Coco's son admitted he knew her. Chirvasiu began interrogating him, asking if anyone would want to murder her. When asked where he was, Coco's son said there was a party at the house, and he had been there. Chirvasiu then requested a list of everyone who attended the party. Chirvasiu asked about Raj, and Nistor explained that Raj worked for Romika. They went to the diner to speak with Romika. They inquired about his past activities. Then Chirvasiu asked about Heidi. He also asked if Romika knew that Raj and Heidi were together, but Romika couldn't provide any information. Chirvasiu asked where Romika had been the previous night, and Romika said he was there. As they were leaving, Chirvasiu asked Nistor where he had been the past few days, and Nistor told him he was home alone. Nistor went to talk to Karina. She told him she had checked on Marika's gangs, and they were all at the nightclub. She then asked if there was anything he wanted to tell her, but he said there was nothing. She asked where Raj was, and he said he didn't know. She then informed him that they had already found Raj, 
The police discovered Raj dead. The colonel arrived and asked about the situation. Chirvasu told him they found a bruise on Heidi's body, indicating that she fought her attacker. He then ordered Nistor to bring the body, but Nistor struggled with the task. The colonel remarked that an old man couldn't kill and move a body on his own, thus removing Nistor from the suspect list. They returned to the diner, where the colonel told Nistor that an innocent person wouldn't have agreed to help with moving the body. Nistor replied that he was only trying to assist with the investigation. The colonel inquired about his watch, and Nistor said it was from his father, but it had been taken. Lastly, the colonel asked if there was anything more he'd like to share, but Nistor said there wasn't. Nistor then went to see his daughter for a haircut. The movie concludes with Nistor sitting in the chair, the mystery unsolved. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our video. Watch the next recaps on the screen, and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.